Hi hey folks, David, Creative Craft House, to show you the, uh, the latest version of our Enigma series. Uh, based on some requests and some ideas of my own, we've made some few changes. Uh, we call it Enigma 37, and it's called 37 because the gears we have made with 37 teeth. The Enigma 2s and 3s uh, all have uh, 26 teeth. These extra teeth allow us to put numbers on here as well as I've added a period or a decimal point, which I thought might come in handy. Numbers are very rare on, on encryption machines. Uh, typically you have to spell out uh, numbers. Uh, so, so I think this is going to be uh, pretty handy and pretty useful, uh, perhaps more so for escape rooms, also in the sense that they're often wanting to transmit number codes. Uh, the, we've also, I've also done some work on the base. Uh, I've upgraded the base a bit. It's a bit, a bit bigger. But uh, and also a bit thicker, and we've gone to hickory. Uh, it's a nice American hickory, uh, really nice gloss finish. Uh, it's a beautiful base. Hickory has a, a, a variety of looks. It can be a little darker, it can be even a little lighter, but it's all going to be uh, hickory. Now, I, I want to go through, some of you may know how to use the Enigmas from our Enigma 2s or 3s, which you have, or 4s or 5s. Uh, but I'm going to go through it here um, and maybe add a few things that you're not aware of. The Enigma machines, uh, as you can see, have these three gears, and they are um, interchangeable. I mean, they're spinning here on this um, nice uh, alloy steel pin, um, and you know the gears could go in any place. So that's one level of security. First of all, you don't know what's on the gears. Each gear is different to the, in terms of the uh, letter arrangement. Uh, so each gear is different, and each gear can be placed on any one of the uh, pins. The other thing that a gear can do is be, re be placed respectively in different orders. I mean, just by moving this gear, I'm going to get a whole new series of results in my encoding process. So to order to start to encode a message, there's two things you have to define, and that one is the wheel order. And each wheel is, is labeled. This is 37C, and there's a 37B, and a 37A. So I have to define my wheel order. In this case, if we keep this wheel order, it's, it's C, B, A, 37C, B, and A. That defines the wheel order. The next thing I need to define is what's called the key, or the keyword. Uh, I need three letters, or three numbers, or a combination of those. So let's um, let's uh, let's pick a, a keyword here. Of uh, well, there's, you notice there's an there's an arrow here, a pointer. There's a pointer here, and on this wheel. Um, oh shoot! Let me use a different example because I pulled that one from production. Didn't have the pointer on. On this one, you've got a kind of a raised arrow on it. Okay, let me get the same wheel order: C B C B A C. All right, there we go. Um, so I need to define the uh, gear relationship. So let's say my keyword is dog. I'm going to take the first wheel and put the pointer to the letter D, the second wheel to the letter uh, O. Be careful the O and the zero. The, the numbers we have underlined on here, so they should be easy to tell apart. And the third uh, pointer to the G. Now I have established my wheel order and I have established my key which establishes the relationship of the wheels, D, O, G, and now I'm ready to start encoding. And it's really a handy, quick, and fast process with this machine and very secure. The more often you change the wheel order or change the key within the body of your message, the more secure it becomes. In fact, you can make it so secure it's almost uh, undecipherable. I have created this nice little worksheet, which is really handy for using the wheels in terms of it. it's organized and you're not likely to make any mistakes in the encoding or the decoding process. Um, it defines, you know, here's my wheel order, here's my key. Uh, first thing you do if you're encoding a message is write down um, your um, text. So we need to create a secret message, and let's suppose my message is um, send help. Now, let's say send help now. Now, messages are always sent in blocks of four or five, depending on the system. 
um, so that word lengths aren't given. In this case, I happen to have just arbitrarily chose four-letter words, but they could be any length words here. But they're sent, the message is sent in blocks of four. When a message doesn't complete a block of four, then you throw in uh, an X to complete the box. You can have one, two, or three X's if it didn't happen to complete. All right, so everything looks uh, blocks of four. You're not giving away anything when you do that. Now, to start the encoding process, since I've, I've got my wheel order, which we said was C, B, A, and my key, which was D, O, G, if you ever forget, I can record on that. You see, I know what it is. And then you'll notice as I start to record, this kind of helps me, because this is the English text wheel, the one with the big arrow here. It's the English text wheel. These two are the encoding wheels. And when we're encoding, we're going to work from, we're going to set our English letter here and read off the encrypted letters on one of these two wheels. And we're going to alternate wheels as we go through the message. It just helps with the security, right? So the, the worksheet's going to have uh, a gear one or real one, gear one, gear two, or gear one, gear two, because we're just going to alternate through the message. So my first, hold this a little bit. To start the encoding, um, my uh, first letter is an S, so I'm going to put the text wheel on the S. You probably can't see it, but that pointer is to an S. And I'm going to read to the f over to the first gear, which gives me the letter L. The next letter I need is an E. I go to the second wheel and it's the number zero. The next letter is an N. Uh, where's the N here? Back to the first wheel, it's a four, and then the worksheets tell me go to gear one. It says that right there. Uh, then a D. And the coded letter is a T. Now I'm going to just keep repeating this process. It's very quick get the English text over here and go, you're just going wheel one, wheel two, wheel one, wheel two, wheel one, wheel two. And you've got a nice encoded message, uh, quite secure. Now, if you're dealing with a short message like this, very secure. If you're dealing with a long message, you may at some point during the message want to change the wheel order, for instance, or change the key. I usually just like to change the key. It's a little, a little bit handier. You can prearrange with the person you're sending, and, and you might say, oh, every 20 letters change the uh, keyword to thus, and you've prearranged that on the side. Arranging keywords is one of the great challenges, and it always has been, of using encryption equipment. The other person has to have the key. He has to have the machine, and he has to have the key, too, to be able to interpret or decode what you're telling him. Now, there is a way to encode the wheel order and the key within the message. I like to use this. It's, I mean, it takes away from security if someone's got the machine and knows how to use it, but really, how many people have the machine and know how to use it? Right? So it's pretty darn secure, and it, it just reduces any possible confusion when, you're, when you are changing uh, keys. What I like to do is, if I'm along the body of a message, if I want to change a key, change a, uh, a key, I'll use an at sign. And then I'll put the new key in. Suppose the new key is hot. That's a, sim that's a signal for, for you on the other end. Um, I'm going to I've changed the wheel order, and now instead of dog, it's going to be H -O hot, H-O-T. So I've got an H, and then I've got to change this one to an O, and this one to a T. And when I do that, I've got an entirely new encryption scheme. Letters are going to be totally changed, okay? And I can do put these this at sign new key anywhere within my message. I like to use the at sign to, to, for uh, change of the uh, key, and I like to use an, uh, an at sign, you know, an at sign for the change of the wheel order, okay? Pretty effective, pretty easy, and it just helps with uh, security um, if you want it to be. There, there are there are a number of things you can do also to help uh, reduce the uh, the message process, you can have little, little prearranged keywords that represent uh, phrases, places, names. They're called pro words sometimes. You know, I mean, the, the, the sample I've given in my instructions here, the goat right, might represent, goat, the word goat might represent creative craft house if I'm sending messages. Goat's a lot shorter than trying to encode creative craft house every time, right? And you can have your own uh, keywords. Shush is short generally three, four, five-letter words that mean something longer. It could mean a whole phrase. Okay, 
that's something that you would have to prearrange. But it can be very, very helpful and has been commonly used throughout history in the process of encoding messages. Okay. So this is, uh, this is our own design, made right here in Hudson, Florida. Uh, there are, our old designs are still available, the Enigma 2, which has uh, the 26 gear teeth, uh, and available in this larger size and a smaller size. The Enigma 3, which has 26 gear teeth and has letters on both sides. And the Enigma 4, which has six gears and letters on both sides. So you just have many more possible combinations. Before I go, I did want to explain that the process of decoding an encoded message is equally as easy, and you just work in reverse. Instead of going from the text wheel to the coding wheels, we're going from the coding wheels to the text wheels. So in this particular case, where our wheel order, do need to know that, with CBA, and I do need to know the keyword dog, and these are set up accordingly. Uh, I, I have the letter L in my text encoded message. I put the first wheel in L and read the English word over here, uh, which is an S. First, remember our message was sent help now. I go to the second um, letter, which was the zero on the second wheel, and if I put a zero over here, um, find it, there it is. It goes to the next letter of our uh, English text message, which is E. So it, I'm just working in reverse, knowing the code and filling in the text. Okay? All uh, quite easy to do, quite handy. All right, this is Dave at Creative Craft House, made in our Hudson, Florida shop.